Hello, my friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And it's been a long time since we have had hideouts on the menu for some Age of Empires 2 action. Uh, this is a Loe the Legends game. That villager doesn't... Nope, nope. He has a job. I think Red was just looking for the house icon. And uh, it's 494 ELO on a map where you start with Palisade Walls. Red loves houses. So we have Gorger Bay playing in the red. Um, that one villager is deep inside the cow. Bet you didn't expect that. Um, and Red's playing as the Khmer. And then the blue... I, I swear we might have covered this player before. Because the MX and a bunch of numbers rings a bell for me. But anyways, I'm not entirely sure. We have MX8295762. Now that... I recall making a phone number joke like... Are you looking for cows away from your town center? Well, don't forget to call 829-55762. You know, I swear I've, I've done that before. But anyways, uh, Ethiopians for blue. So, it's been probably like a month or two, maybe even more since I've done Hideout, which you know, I've always really liked. I don't know if it wasn't voted in the map pool enough. I don't know if I just kind of overlooked it. Maybe a little bit of both. But uh, I'm very excited to cover this because hideout's interesting man like on an open map like arabia you know okay well there's potential for damage and it it's, tends to be play more open and aggressive um on arena it's a bit more defensive because you start with stone walls right but this is in the middle right you could see defensive players play on hideout and you can also see somewhat aggressive players play on hideout you've got two ways to access the enemy two openings you got the opening on this side and the opening on this side one thing I have noticed, though, is that the map generation is definitely favoring blue. Uh, or, excuse me, red. Uh, colors are very difficult for me at the age of 30. But, yeah, you, so there's five relics on the map, and three of them are on red side. So, bam, bam, and bam. And then there's also two neutral gold. Wait. Wait, hold on. Three tile gold, three tile gold, three tile gold, three tile gold. Okay, so there's there's four neutral three tile golds, one of what could possibly be considered blues is in the opening here. Now, having said that, if you control this area in general, you could control all of this as well. So this is probably the most important area of the map. And hideout is normally like that, so if you're playing hideout, uh, just keep that in mind. Okay, so you know the key in this game is keeping villagers producing, right? Red is more villagers right now. Uh, but Red hasn't gone to wood at all. It's been an interesting little build here. Uh, Red built five houses up against the edge of the map. I like how he built it around the gate. Looks very nice. And, uh, you know, again, hasn't gone to wood at all yet. So won't be able to afford a mill or a lumber camp or anything. And I believe Red also just... Is this auto scout or is this a manual scout? Let's see the way it moves. I believe Red just clicked the auto scout button, which is not uncommon because I think Blue has done the same. Yes, yeah, so both players... I basically said, the rest of this game is way too difficult for me. What, how do you guys even focus on this? I am so busy on this, I can't focus on my scout, so we just click the auto button. So if you don't know about auto scout, if you're you know player at these players' caliber, or if you're just feeling a little bit lazy, feel like maybe it's even better for you to do that, because you forget about your scout all the time, you can just click this little button, boop, and it always starts with the right corner. So it's actually slightly better in theory to do auto scout if you are in the left corner of the map because it will wonder it will actually scout your opponent kind of interesting how that works i don't know did blue pull this off of auto scout maybe because i'm wondering if they're going to take boars okay big moment here for mx um does have loom should be more than fine boar does not want to cooperate he said nope i'm not angry enough now i'm angry okay he's super angry Red is has also taken a board. The execution levels a, bit, a little bit lower than players might want to aim for with the boars, but boars are big and scary, and boom, food. Now, Blue, you did forget to make villagers this entire time. Is this a bill? Wait! I bet you he's waiting for 500 food to go feudal, but he doesn't have the second Dark Age building. Uh-oh. Oh, wait, there's going to be the second Dark Age building. Alright, um, the Khmer don't actually have to build their prerequisite buildings, which is really nice. You, If you get the food, you can just go up to the next stage. Same with any, um, you know, age. Same with any building as well, right? You want a stable? Bam. Forget about the barracks. Just make that stable. 
Khmer is very nice Civ, when you're learning. It is tricky, though, because if you get used to not having to have certain buildings, it can kind of screw you up if you play with other civs. But I still don't consider it to be awful. Yeah, blue, I think this is part of the plan. Because blue's like, I need 500 food to go feudal. But blue and red, very big difference in how they prioritize creating villagers. Blue's now on the way to feudal. And red is just... Oh my god. Red is the true low elo legend, man. Red hates these trees. Red, make a lumber camp for the love of god. Why are we walking such large distances? Look, he just clicked these villagers to this tree. He hates that tree specifically. Oh boy, is this a real example of the whole straggler tree thing. I think a lot of it is, and I've been doing this for a couple years now, this low elo thing. I think they have the big trees, okay? And I don't think they like the way the trees look. Like, they want a clean base. And, like, this guy's front lawn is probably impeccable quality, right? He's got no weeds. He's got no issues whatsoever. He really likes the way his, his Age of Empires base looks. I can imagine on the weekends, he's out there working hard. So, yeah, he's just going to clean those bad boys up. They're ugly, T90. Yes, well, so is his economy right now, but I guess his base will be pretty in a moment. So, you know what? We'll leave the big trees on. We'll see what Blue's going to do to recover in this game. I'm concerned about Blue just because of the lack of villagers. Uh, Blue's going crazy on the berries here. And Blue's placed some houses, which is good, and queued up villagers, which is also good. You get 100 food and 100 gold when you arrive to the next stage with the Ethiopians. So that's a nice little boost for you. Um... Wood upgrade, farm upgrade coming in. All good things to get. It doesn't seem like either player really has an order in which they want to do things. Oh, God. These extra clusters of red... Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. He hates it. So this isn't normal. <laughs> this is not normal for uh, map generations. This is... I guess you could consider it a bit of a bug. But these extra clusters of trees are just going to screw up Red's whole day. Because now... Well, screw up my day. Because now Red's going to spend more time walking this way. Listen, we're going to appreciate this guy for what he is. And we're going to have some fun with this. But if you can't tell, this bothers me. <laughs> this bothers me so much. It would totally be worth it for him to make a lumber camp here, too. Let's look at the, the villagers' lives. Okay, so they have been moving. God, that's so small. 48% of their life. They've been on food for 6%. And, you know, they are... Uh, have chopped wood for 44%. I mean, moving is catching up. Oh, God. And now, like, what happens is the villagers, after a while, the game naturally says, maybe we should go to a different area because these trees are further than these trees. Oh, my God. Red, are you, you got to be doing this intentionally here. Okay, we're going to make stables that block our lumber camp efficiency. He's, he knows I'm watching, right? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I just care so much. I care so much about the efficiency of this guy's economy. It really is important to me. Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> meanwhile over here, you know, Blue's a straggler tree guy as well. Hopefully not to the same extremes, because I might lose my mind. Um, 22 villagers for Blue, 28 for Red. Um, you know, you've got this. That makes me very happy. How's this going? Well, okay, dropping off the wood at the lumber camp. I swear, where are you going here, Red? Okay, they can't all drop off because there's a staple there. Okay, now the villagers have been tasked to go make a blacksmith. Okay, all together now. All right. I... Listen, I moved... We're talking real life here. I moved a lot the last five years, right? So maybe this is kind of what my life's been like, just moving around all the time. But listen, Red, after a while, you just got to settle down and pick a spot, all right? Just just do it, please. Because this economy is so mobile. I mean, their cardio's got to be off the charts. But this is a first, guys. I recently went back and watched the very first Loi the Legends cast. And I couldn't believe, like, how different the world was to me then. I've, I've become so accustomed and understanding of how players like to play and things they like to do. But this is just, it's unique in all the ways. 
And, okay, these villagers, which were on the lumber camp, their jobs have now been taken. They're probably saving wood for something. And, you know, red's going to town. Um, we'll look at the resources collected. Blue is four less vills. Blue is more. It's crazy what happens when your villagers are actually working somewhat efficiently. We've got some stone mining for blue. We've got some gold mining for blue. And blue must know Ethiopians have good archers. Because blue also making some archer... Or archer ranges, that is. I do like that red has placed houses as extra layers of fortifications all around the palisades. I also know red, and I know red is desperate to chop through these trees so another house can go there, and I'm ready for that day to arrive. The farms now begin for red. No horse collar makes me a little sad, but, you know, five on food is going to be way better than the zero on food red has had for a while. And we are now going to see red go for the forging upgrade which would add attack to the scout or any melee units out there. But I'm a little concerned that red is just not going to have the foodie go to ever reach castle. But the basics are there of crate villagers all the time. And now you notice how red's like, ah, oh, it's so, it's so cleared out now. It's so smooth. My base looks amazing. Like now he's probably loving life because he put in the work to cut down all those pesky trees. And now he can farm. Which is what he wanted in the first place. I don't really remember what this looked like exactly. I've tried my best to forget it, to be honest with you. But, okay, going to town. Blue's base looks a little bit more along the lines of standard. In terms of build-up. And Blue's got 11 farms. This is really good. And it's slowly the food count's going to climb. The gold income and stone income already there for Blue. But the beauty of a true low elo legends match these days we do have the higher low elo legends that we cover right but this is a true low elo legends map is there's no big rush for them they can do some of these things that make me want to scream and they can get away with it it's just a different world and we actually have scouts now for red as well so i'll be interested to see exactly how he plays with these scouts because you cannot auto scout with a new scout but at this point, he has a lot of vision, and so he could go over and maybe attack that gate. Blue's trying to make archers here. Blue doesn't have houses at the moment. So no population space for that. It's just going to make some houses, so it's going to take some time. All right. Wow. Okay. So Red started with two stables, has a total of four scouts right now, and says, you know what? We need more scouts. And for more scouts, we need more stables. So the two stables is now turning into four stables. Loves to block the wood lines. Still working away on this tree. I'm just waiting on how long it's going to take for Red to build a house there. I honestly don't think it's going to be long. Then again, though, Red does have a lot of army to focus on right now. Blue is on the way to Castle Age. I think Red is attacking Blue's auto scout. Yes. You think that, you know, the scouts would respect each other because they've both taken the auto life. But that does not seem to be the case. Or maybe this is the auto scout. Oh, yeah. These guys hate on auto scout. Because new scouts can't auto scout. And they just, they just, they're jealous, really. But this is good for blue because there's a lot of attack signals, right? So this gives blue an idea that red's ready to fight, possibly. Maybe even notice the additional scout. And Ethiopians get free pikemen, so if I see scouts, I'd just be making some spears right now. Okay. This tree's almost gone, guys. Tree is now gone. And they, look at how the farms are positioned. It's a perfect box. A 3 by 5 little box here of farms. And there go the scouts attacking the gate. Now, I'm worried that this will actually kill Blue. Blue does not have upgrades. Blue does not have spears, and that's a lot of scouts here. And, well, there they go. And the town bell has been rung. That will only save villagers that really don't need to be saved, like the farmers. We talk about this a lot. And here and I have a video, <clears throat> TC tip video, highly suggest it. It talks about how you could maybe do a slightly better job in these types of situations. But anyways, Blue's waiting for Castle Age. This one archer's just like, I got you. Come closer, I dare you. And Blue's completely frozen. Okay, well, this other archer dared... He, he went too far. And now the scouts have gone too far. But they kill the archer, and they see the TC fire. And Blue is scared. 
Blue's like, this guy's a menace. He's got a lot of scouts. I, I don't know what to do without stone and gold. This game is very scary. I was told it was peaceful. This is so much different when I used to play growing up. So we see a castle here. Now, red has 16 total scouts. And, you know, that, that means there's more on the way. Red is not up to castle age. Blue has been disrupted. But both players have kind of forgot to make villagers here. So it's, you know, 34 villagers versus 35. Which to me means blue probably has the advantage. We'll see what type of units blue wants to make. I'm guessing blue wants to make show tails, which doesn't feel like a bad unit. Also, random auto scout for, for uh, blue. Show tails create really fast. He had a lot of food, and they have a lot of attack. So I believe the Showtel Warriors could could kill off the scouts from Red. And I've seen enough lower elo games where I think Red... I don't know what type of fighting spirit Red has. I know Red loves to chop trees. But I think there's a possibility. If these Showtels actually group together and don't run in one by one. I mean, those are big knives. But Blue, you've got to... Blue, save them. Save them up here, buddy. Save till you get a solid mass. Take that fight. I think Red will have some real concerns. But Red, for the time being, is attacking the houses. And he's attacking the houses because he thinks that would really hurt me because I've got houses on my walls, too. So it's a different type of game sense down here at this elo. The thing is, the Showtel Warriors have less, less HP than the Scouts. But they still do have a ton of attack. And now that you've got a bunch together, I think this is where Blue starts to be the favorite in these types of fights. I actually have not seen fully upgraded Scouts versus Showtel Warriors that frequently. Might come as a shock to you guys. There's the town belt. There are the Showtel Warriors fighting. Scouts should win. Look how little HP there is. Wow, the scouts are actually insane. Now, pikes, on the other hand, you know, like I think a mix of pikes would be really helpful. By the way, when the attack started, Red had 35 villagers. Blue had 35. It's now 35 versus 34. The, 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 neither of these guys are creating villagers. They're just focused on the fights, as many feel like life should be in this game. Red getting more kills. This is why Red's unit control is so good. Blue's still really struggling, and Red could click up to Castle Age, and then Castle Age could upgrade these, could make a lot of things. Red is my favorite to win the game now. Must be so much fun to be Red right now, just controlling these scouts. And, okay, looks home. Clicks up to Castle Age. Look at those resources for Red. Red's going to have almost enough resources for Imp, it feels like. Blue's still trying to mass Showtel Warriors. Real issue for Blue is that when units are created, their default is attack stance. And so these random units just keep going in there on their own. They're, they're trying to be the hero. But you're Showtel Warriors. You are not able to be the hero on your own. Also, these guys give me Ninja Turtle vibes. I don't know if anyone's ever mentioned that before. But when they're facing away, especially Ninja Turtle vibes, for sure. I watch a lot of Ninja Turtles. I wish I would have watched more. But just never really did. There's 11 Showtels inside of that TC right now, by the way. So these guys are going out on their own. And Blue has clearly lost faith in this. 35 vills for red, 32 for blue, because blue lost two. But blue hasn't created anymore. And Blue's trying to use the castle in the TC fire. But, I mean, now, if he remembers that he has 13 showtels inside of this castle, he clears this up. Blue is not going to be able to do anything else until this is dealt with. The stress is just so real right now. Please remember... Did he forget? I think he, he doesn't realize. Okay, archers are, are luring the scouts over. There's so many weak scouts. The archers might actually be able to help, even though there's no upgrades. Okay, there we go. Castle fire, Showtail warriors. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is the moment. Big clear up for blue. Oh, God. <laughs> Please remember. I, I think he's forgotten them. <laughs> Hey, there's Auto Scout. Yo, let's go Auto Scout. He's like, are you kidding me, guys? You've got these massive pointy little knives, and I've got this random dull sword. Look at him go. He has to die, but he proved a point. 
That's all that matters. Can you hear blue sigh of relief? Did you guys hear that? Well, no, it didn't happen. He's really panicked. He's like, let's stonewall it up. We have vulnerabilities. And, oh, boy, I would not like to be these villagers. They are... Okay, well, they're now on the outside. They are now in the danger territory. So I guess they'll be clicked back in and have to walk the long way. Blue's in the back to making more villagers. Great. Red goes, hey, I want a town center. Hey, I want a town center. So we're going to have more town centers. Has clicked wheelbarrow, and then believe it or not, with zero villagers on gold. Almost as if just making scouts is his whole plan for the rest of this game. He also clicked through the Imperial Age. We have a four stable... We, uh, hold on, let's back up. We have a chop every single straggler tree and walk long distances. Into 20 scout... A four stable scout rush. Into the 3TC fast imp approach. And I'm assuming because that's what Red did before... Red's just going to spend all the food on Lightcap, which is never really a bad idea with the Khmer, by the way. Like, they've got fantastic stable units, and they've got fantastic food flow because of the way the farms work. So, yeah, I mean, it'll happen eventually. This villager now is going to wall this side. Okay, so perhaps some concern from Red that Blue is going to come attack him before he's ready. I get it. All right. This has been a great game. I really hope people are enjoying this as much as I am. Sometimes I worry, especially like with YouTube, I just don't know how many views a video is going to get. I don't know how interested someone's going to be. You might have had a really bad day, and it's been so bad that you just can't enjoy this at the same level. Or maybe you had a bad day, and this has just made everything, it made the game better. I never really know, but this has been great. And sure, the part of that is the caffeine that I'm drinking. But the other part of that is my fascination with this game. And I love it. More villagers on the way for Red. I imagine eventually Red's going to build farms. Yes, it is true. Gold shaft mining. The second gold mining upgrade for, uh, for Red was research with zero on gold. But when that gold mining comes, it's going to be great. And I guess the monk is now going to go out to get relics. Very important thing in Age of Empires 2 is to snag those relics for long-term gold income, especially this elo. You can tell there's like, there's two different types of people in this world. There's the type of people who go and they're crazy with scouts and are really aggressive. And then there's the type of people that get attacked once and they're so terrified they never leave their base again. Perfect opportunity for blue to move out. Would have been right after clearing up those scouts. Red doesn't have anything. But Blue's scared. And Blue's like, we're not ready. Attacking is scary. There's a lot of darkness out there. I remember the feeling. Like, these days, it's like, I can think more strategically. I'm like, all right, we got to see what building they're building. There's a lot of, like, expectations out there. It doesn't scare me. But this Fog of War, man, I don't know if it's like this in other games. Because I never, I didn't play as many games as most of you guys. But it's a bit spooky. Not the scouting fog, but like the, the dark, the actual darkness. I still remember that feel. There's going to be a monastery for blue now. And that's going to be likely to pick up some relics. And then red is going to wall here. And I mean, I would suggest maybe walling here, but I guess that's fine. Still haven't seen much from red beyond just build production. But I mean, is in the Imperial Age. And has a better economy and is getting relics. So I give an advantage to Red. Now, here's the thing. I said there's two different types of people, right? Some people, because they've been raided so frequently, they have different strats in mind. Some people stonewall at home. Other people make pikemen. But other people make town centers that are so far away from the original town center that it could never be found and could never be raided. Blue, are you are you kidding me right now? Are you going to build a town center on that hill? Yup. Maybe, you know, there's like a little side story. Maybe he's role-playing and maybe, you know, Blue doesn't feel very welcomed and accepted in this world. And so this he's role-playing as himself. He's like, I'm going to go build my own colony 
in a land where people accept me. I I can only imagine, but um, this town center is pretty much on nothing. There's not even a tree here. I suppose it does give vision over the relic, though. Okay. Um, wow, lots of buildings for red. I have to appreciate how red builds the buildings. Look at how red structures things. You know, you've got these... This nice little box of houses and then box of buildings. So we've got barracks now. Bunch of upgrades coming in and those bad boys. University too. Castle behind it all. Very SimCity-like. Um, still a large army of Shota warriors for blue. And blue is going to head over there and get that relic. Uh, yo, Danny, thanks for the year of subbing. Says, you give me more value than my Netflix subscription. I think it's only direct debit. And I missed the rest of the, the, rest of the message. But hey, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Netflix is a lot of content. I know some people feel like Netflix isn't what it used to be. But I can't compete with the quality. Oh, 4K quality. I mean, I am actually uploading in 4K these days. But I don't know if this is really what sells you guys. Crop rotation. So the farms are going to have tons of food now for red. And and red is like, I, I'm going to prepare for everything. I'm going to make all types of buildings. We've got four stables. We've got six barracks. I'm wondering if we're going to see eight archer ranges. There's relic number one for blue. Blue loves the show tells. <laughs> T90 and chill, anyone? Listen, I don't want to hear any stories about your T90 and chill dates, okay? No stories, please. I just hope I don't say supplies at the wrong time. All right. This is an important moment in the game because remember, I felt like red is the better player with the economy, but also had the slightly better positioning of certain resources and now is making a journey to get a relic in the north. And blue is also on this journey. Now, if you misclick this, this could be a really big problem. Blue red could snag that. And that, I believe he's clicked it. Bam. Now this monk just stops because he doesn't have a job anymore. I doubt Red will notice that. This guy just chilling. Red's going to bring that home. Okay, this is the original villager that built this town center. This is what you basically call farm TC. Is this villager just going to wall off the corner here? Or is this wall going to go to the wood line, which protects the main economy as well? Eco wins games, okay? Military wins fights, eco wins games. You need economy. You have to be able to afford to make more units all the time. Red has gone for the economic approach. Compared to blue, just making lots of army. Hasn't even moved out to see the palisade walls at this point. Still curious on how this wall's gonna go, though. <laughs> You're, you definitely have better quality Netflix. Just plays repeat shows and vampire rubbish. Wait, so first I took it as a compliment, but then you really think they've got nothing? Okay. I will say I, I don't watch uh, as much Netflix as I used to. I think there used to be a time where it was like Netflix had all the stuff. Now there's. I know it kind of sucks, guys. Um, not to you know encourage you guys. To watch things other than my content. I know it kind of sucks. There's like a million different streaming apps now. Because it used to be like, oh, you got your normal cable or whatever. Then you got one streaming app. Now it's like six. But I will say, it. there have been some cool shows created because of the competition and the whole TV streaming thing, you know? Wow, look at these castles from Red. Um, we're not going to get into it now. But like, there are some shows that I, I feel like wouldn't have been created had other companies that wanted to make a push to give Netflix some competition. Anyways, you guys probably watch more than I do. I spend the majority of my time doing this. Still curious about this wall. We do have blacksmith upgrades coming in now for blue, which blue didn't do before. And you know what I'd love to see is if blue could just make an outpost here. Ethiopians get lots of vision. I wonder what would happen if blue would spot that. Hmm. I mean, the army is insane for blue. It's three to two on relics, red having three. But we, we know what red's going to do already, right? Red's like, this is eco time. We're not ready yet. 
And then there's going to be a time where Red just stops looking at the economy again and fights, similar to what happened before with the scout rush. Is he building farms between the cat? Did he space this so he could build farms on every single part of this? Yo, I mean, it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be a couple gaps here or there. But this is still really interesting. Wow, man, this is super Sim City. I didn't think when he was walking long distances to chop the trees that he had this grand of a plan. Not going to lie. Imp coming in for blue, and blue is walling off this corner. <laughs> I mean, okay, forget this funny side story that I mentioned about how, uh, you know, this guy wanted to create his own colony. Can someone explain the logic here? Is the logic possibly if I split up my economy, he won't be able to raid at all? Or maybe it's worth investing this much stone into this because I'm walling in this stone, which would just bring me the, you know, more, even more stone in return. I don't know. Blue is... What is that? What is happening? I believe maybe he just clicked his units to red side. And because this is walled, they, they got stuck in the trees. But we have a leap ballista elephant being researched right now. That's a very difficult unit to counter. If they get masked. And we have Trebs as well for Red. So Red's in military mode. These Shotel Warriors though. They're going to melt that gate. There's 52 Shotels out there. That's a lot. And they're now through. Okay. It would be kind of funny if Red sees this. And Red puts a lot of focus on this. Also Red selling wood right now to get gold. Always important. To get the best of the market prices in the long games. That's precisely what red's going to have. And now we have elite ballistas. I'm concerned for blue. But blue does have a window to get some damage in here. There go the show tells. And uh, the monks are going to die. The villagers are going like, to drop off gold. And fight. They don't even try and save themselves. They just fight. At least red dropped off the gold first at least. 33 kills for both players guys. That mining camp gone. But there's Trebs and there's Ballistas. Now, is Red just going to ignore this? Does he know Ballista Elephants can cut trees? Or is he going to lure these things in? I mean, he should shred infantry with Ballistas. His, it's a, scorpions are great against infantry. And I think Blue's going to see those elephants and have no clue what to do. And answer what you do. You want Siege. Onager is really good. And Ethiopians have good onagers. So you'd want Siege Workshop, obviously. These villagers, they heard about the gold miners, weren't very happy about it, so they're going to drop some castles to protect themselves. So this seems to be a scouting elephant, and he's now noticing that the Shotel Warriors have run away. For the time being, the Shotel Warriors are just sitting on the gold. Lots of resources for blue. Do onagers survive long enough against ballista elephants? Yeah, if you have like four or five of them in combination with other units, it gets very tricky. I also think, I forget when, because there were a couple tweaks to ballistas over the past year, but I think there was a change where they received more damage from, from monitors. Royal Airs now. Okay, so I'm trying to remember. So Royal Airs was always a tech that Ethiopians had, but before it just made Shotels produce faster. Now, the Shotel production speed was just increased when you get Elite Shotel. Because the devs realized, like, why do we have a tech for faster producing Shotel Warriors when Shotel Warriors already produce pretty fast? And now it's like extra attack against cavalry for their camels and infantry, I think? Someone could maybe clarify exactly what it is. The monks are going to heal this up. I think it's like plus two attack? I actually forget. Blue's going to grab this goal, the great find. But guys, look at the army value for the cost of the armies. And then look at the army amount. 31 army versus 77. Red still got a more army value. Uh, for camels and show tails, plus three versus mounted units. Okay. Is the ballista elephant considered a mounted unit? It is mounted with a scorpion. I believe it would be considered as such, but that is interesting. 
Because like I think like a battle elephant would be considered a mounted unit because you've got a rider. I don't even think the show tells are well, okay. A lot of show tells are gonna die before they get in close to the elephants. But, you know, if he makes if he has a hundred of them, he could wreck these things. And red isn't exactly rolling with gold right now. Wait, hold on, hold on. Someone said for camels and showtails plus three versus mounted unit. And someone said showtails and camels receive minus three damage from mounted units. Okay, so I read the wrong message. Thank you, Zlottle. By this, does that mean they would receive less damage from the scorpions? I don't know. Anyways, they're fully upgraded showtail warriors. 18 plus four attack, 50 HP. And Red continues to sell food and wood just to get gold. Also should be mining this gold. Which Red is now doing. Plus three armor, 11. Yeah, well, thanks for making me look like an nincompoop, bro. Like I need any more help with that. <laughs> this, guys, this little colony is still here. <laughs> it's still here. Uh... This might end up being the food economy that saves blue. Red is really building up to go for the kill. Red has heard me say, do not trickle trap. And Red didn't watch my most confusing technologies video, which I said it was going to make for two and a half years. Finally made this past week. It might be two or three weeks by the time this hits YouTube, but there's heated shot. Doesn't help here. And there are the show tells. Oh my God. Big fight. But... There's just so much chonkiness. And Blue realizes, like, I can't fight those things. How many elephants even died there? Not many. Maybe one? That is just not a unit you want to fight with Shoto Warriors. So, let me clarify the whole heated shot situation, alright? So he already has chemistry, which adds the flames to his shots. And it adds plus one attack. Okay, that plus one there is from chemistry. Heated shot increases the amount of damage your towers and castles do versus ships. Now, that's very confusing, but that's what it is. So, it does not help here because there's no water. But we do have Onager on the way for blue, and now this is going to get interesting, especially if our blue player gets Torsen Engines. Red, though, will uh, apparently be mixing in some Hussars, or at least like have. And that is going to be quite strong here to snipe some siege. But when I see 99 villagers versus 53, I always favor the 99 villagers. Always. That and the three relics. So if you're a player who... And there's Torsen Engines. Oh, man, this could be epic. Because Red doesn't know that Blue only has 53 villagers. If Red loses that entire elephant army, I mean... I imagine it might be emotional because it's kind of sad when you hear the elephants die. But, you know, it might just feel like he can't win, especially losing access to all this gold. Hmm. Never thought it was a confusing tech because it says what it does. Yeah, yeah I did see some comments on that. I mean, listen, the I tried to clarify that in the video. That, like, yeah, if you read everything word for word, that uh, maybe some of those things aren't going to be confusing. Uh, there, I'm going to do another episode because people correctly pointed out there were some other ones which, based on their descriptions, are more confusing and thus should maybe be more confusing. But, like, it's a fast-moving game. There's a lot of stuff going on. And I think on some level, you do sometimes just assume things. I'll give you an example. When the Ghulam came out... Oh, wait, hold on. Red, please find this. Oh, my God. Red found this. Oh, my life is made. I'll just forget about the example. Red's like, wait a second. This must be really important. What could this possibly be? Let's investigate this. Isn't looking at the main base, but instead is like, hmm. He stonewalled this area. This must be rather important to the enemy. <laughs> Checking this side, seeing another gate as well. Now, I'd like to see Blue use these show tells and get to this gold and get villagers there as well. That, that would be an important find. And okay, Red's going to attack the gate now. 
Now blue's got blist elephants. He's got Hussar, or red, red does, sorry. He's got Hussars, and now he's going to have Halbs. Halbs will not be a very helpful unit against Ethiopians, but it is still a unit that doesn't cost gold that you can add into the meat grinder. And it, at the very least, it does one damage, and it's a distraction. So it's not a bad thing to mix in. So this castle for blue is massing show tells to deal with this. Meanwhile, blue's just kind of waiting near the walls here. Blue has no gold income, except for the relics. Red has more gold in the bank. But blue is going to have 90 Shotel Warriors. And here we are. I guess Shotels don't really have that much melee armor, so Halbs are actually doing okay against them. They really only have three melee armor. And the Halbs have six plus four attack. Obviously, the show tells, though, <laughs> it's got 22 attacks, so. <laughs> okay, big line of bodies from red still running forward. And the show tell warriors are going to clear this. But they don't have a lot of HP, as you can see here. So, And you're killing some gold units. It's not actually that bad. Though it might demoralize red a little bit here. Especially, I think he set the rally point here. So now they're not attacking at all. Now you're just feeding some kills. I like the map awareness here from blue, though. The fact that blue is over here. And red... Oh, boy, this is going to get interesting. Red can see blue's houses. So red is dropping a castle here. Now, I still don't know if red knows that you can use the ballistas to chop through the trees. If he did, you could just chop right through and raid your opponent. But you can use the trebs over top of those trees to start taking out blue's houses. And this might make... This might make blue make trebuchets or something here. And again, blue could use the onagers to chop the trees too. Why not send the elephants? Well, think about red's approach. Red's build up with more economy. Red's played very defensive. Red wants to make sure that this there's no mistakes made. So red's just being patient. And with those resources, I think that's possibly even the correct approach. You might argue you could afford to take the fights, but Red doesn't seem completely sure on things. Okay, so here go the Halbs, and then we also are going to have the Elephants headed this time. Now, Blue hasn't reacted to this, is sending villagers to the gold right now, which will add up. Um, And, you know, Blue's still got this little side fake base thing and 130 army. And the Onager, as I said before, it, it, these Onagers are going to wreck, man. Like, I think the Ballistas, while they can kill the Onagers, I think they would really struggle. And you can see the Elephants. Like, that is not something I want to deal with, and they're going to just waddle back home. Blue, by the way, just making more houses in the similar spot, just not quite as close to the Trebs. Let's see. And see, Red is really unsure on things right now because of those onagers. The blue's taking this gold. That's an extra 2,400 gold. Not to mention, blue could also sell wooden food at the market. But can blue actually finish off this game, right? It feels like blue could take good fights, but blue... I mean, can either player finish off this game? It's been a long one. Blue doesn't have anything to take out castles right now. That's the issue. It's very interesting, though. Like, I think this game would be a lot more boring if Red would have just stonewalled the sides and taken all the golds, right? Like, because Red's build up so nicely towards banking up gold. But just completely forgetting about this gold gives Blue a really big chance to catch up on some army count. Well, not catch up on army count. <laughs> He's had way more, but... Like, now catch up on upgrades and do a couple different things. How am I bleeding, right? What the? I guess I had a bug bite. One, one second. Man, this life of a Age of Empires commentator is just so dangerous, guys. A lot of people are like, man, what a cushy life. But no, as I'm casting, just bleeding here. Because of the, a mosquito bite. Just crazy. What a dangerous life I live. I got asked to, to uh, join the Dangerous Jobs TV show where they highlight dangerous occupations, but I declined. I, I really, I, I don't, I don't want any pity. 
for what I have to put myself through for you guys. Okay, this will get interesting. So Red's very much kind of concerned about the whole right side situation. Realizes, oh boy, there's gold here. And is now going to head over to this gold. And those Shotel Warriors are ready to go. They are going to slice and they're going to dice those villagers. And that's going to lead to an attack notification for Red. And Red might send army over there, which could allow Blue to go to the other side. And oh my goodness, Blue is going to have Torsen engines... Sea Jonagers. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Now, Hussar's your best friend right now, if you're red. Because you can... It's a unit that doesn't cost gold. It's got ton, great stats. 7 plus 4 attack, 95 HP. Very mobile. But it can snipe the siege. And I even think, like, Hussar versus Shotel Warrior is cost-efficient. Cost-effective. But Shotel Warriors cost gold. Shotel Warriors will die. It's just maybe initially they take some slightly better traits. My concern for Red, though, is that if Red takes a really bad first fight, does Blue have the confidence to move out? And if Blue does that, what happens? <clears throat> uh, I got my buddy to download AoE. Any tips for a new player? It's honestly just creating villagers. Like, first off, some people, they like to be really good at things when they start, right? I think the key, just create villagers, pick a civilization you'd like, all right? I, th that's like my, the, the best bit of advice. You don't want someone to lose their love of the game and not enjoy their journey because they're trying to focus on winning. Pick a civ you think is really cool. Focus on units you think is really cool. Learn some lessons the hard way. That's completely fine. Oh God, the Hussars have come in! And the town bell over here has been rung. Blue will win that fight. Using the castle fire is kind of nice. The red's going to break in. Yeah, pick a civ you like. And always focus on creating villagers. That, that's your number one focus amongst everything else. Gate's going to go down. Siege Hunter wrecks the treb. And you could tell red's struggling to focus on everything at the same time. Oh, God. No chemistry and no ballistics for blue, which could be problematic. So what you would want is you would want the Shotel Warrior, or the Hussars rather, to be running in against the Siege right now, ideally. Hmm. So I think Red's like, okay, this is a no-go zone. I cannot engage against this. Let's go against the corner base. And so it kind of makes sense for Blue. Like, we criticized it. I mean, he never took this stone, so it still doesn't really click in my brain. But, oh, man, that is just one single trebuchet. That is not going to take out a castle. Oh, wait. Wait, look at them file in. Look at them file in. We have the guard or follow command in use here from blue, which you don't see a lot. You know, it's just because it, it doesn't work perfectly, but it can be very helpful additions to any attack. Uh, or not, actually. This is bad. The show tells they suck. <laughs> They're not fighting. I take it back. Oh, God. We await orders. <laughs> uh, guys, hello. You gonna help? Okay, see Donagers fire and the elephants are gonna get destroyed here. As will the Hussars if they get hit by any of these shots, and they do. Blue might also kill his own siege, which could be a little bit problematic. I still don't understand what the Shotels are doing. They are... Oh, I... Uh, uh... Oh, God. It's painful, but Red's losing. And Red's going to lose Trebs now. And we could kind of talk about how you want to avoid using certain things in the future here, Blue. Because that's just... that That is just not good. Now, here's the thing. I actually think... If the devs are looking... The Treb is still firing! No! Wait, he forgot about the Treb! The Treb's a beast! The stealthy 7 HP Trebuchet takes out the castle. Um, here's the thing. So there's like, there's follow, there's guard, there's, um... I, obviously there's the, the unit stances, like attack, defensive, all those things. The follow and the, and the guard, it has never really been good. Like, I think that... And tell me what you think about this, viewers. I honestly think... That... 
it's bad enough where they could maybe take a look at it and make some changes to how it works. Oh my god, don't tell me this Treb is going to take out all the show tells now. Like, that was just so unbelievably bad, what happened there for Blue. And it makes sense, you know, to, like, control one group of army to go take a fight. Hero Villager. And, um... You control that army, expecting the other army to defend whatever attacks it. But that's not what happened there. And this Treb continues to do damage. Guard is just... You follow... It follows too far behind... Uh, and I think guarding range units is worse because, or sorry, guarding when you're, be, you're the other units are being attacked by range units is worse. Because the guarding unit, it's just not close enough to the unit that's attacking your other units, and then it just kind of does what happens there. Okay, so blue finally notices this treb and clangs it down. A lot of stuff died to that trebuchet. Actually, can I go back and see? Um, that Treb had five kills, and that doesn't include the castle. So not bad. Uh, Red has had Trebs over here for a long time, taking out Blue's houses. And so Blue is making more houses here, but... I mean, Red just dropped a castle here. You can see Blue's kind of finished with all these resources, and... It was just an expensive loss for Blue, but... Brings us back to what we talked about, economy is really important. And Red had set up to have the better eco in the long run a long time ago. And all in Red has known this whole time. Well, here we go. I don't know if Blue's expecting this. Blue... Oh, no way. Oh, this is so unfortunate. The timing is going to be so good for Red here. Red's going to cut through the middle as Blue's trying to go this way. And it's possible Blue notices the middle. So doesn't notice this entire army running through a castle oh no oh pain oh god oh god he's gonna kill his own show tells as well oh no. oh no oh to make matters so much worse i mean he will probably take out the castle so that's exciting and he'll still have army remaining but he did just decimate his own army there that's actually just next level to boost your own KD at the end of the game. Actually, does it even boost it? I don't know. Anyways, here's Ballista Elephants. Red is the Hussars as well. Red's brought in the Trebs. I do not think Blue's necessarily noticed this. I've seen no reaction whatsoever. I think Blue's just looking at this. And Blue's just like, we're doing it, guys. We're doing it. We just kill the castle with these siege monitors. And I take it back. Blue noticed. And Blue just leaves the game. But what a good game this was. There were some confusing aspects to this game, like the little corner bases, or I don't know, the start where Red wandered around this entire eco, chopping trees aimlessly. But we we talk about the importance of having good late game here on Hideout, and we also talk about how it does allow avenues for attack in Feudal Age. And Red kind of did everything, right? He attacked in Feudal Age while it was very delayed compared to maybe most attacks. It was still a pretty significant attack and then also played towards the later stages of the game, both with lots of researches. It's like Red got almost every single one that was available, different unit types, and then also a real good killer comp. Um, so I felt like it was a good game. Blue, my number one advice to you is just make more fills, honestly. I mean, there is also the thing of maybe the matchup wasn't too good for you. It's possible Blue did what I suggested, like is learning the game and said, okay, what do I really like? I like these turtles. These ninja, mutant ninja turtle Shoto warriors are my favorite. So we're going to focus on that and the siege onagers. And, you know, at least the Shoto warriors, I don't think really fit this game and the matchup that well. But, you know, if you're not attacking frequently, just focus on pumping out more vills because it allows you to make mistakes and it gives you an opportunity to recover. 50,000 resources more collected for red. Like red would have to make some pretty horrible mistakes consistently. To lose a game like that as long as red was producing of course um army high was high for blue with 147 so that's pretty cool to see i think the army count was probably higher for the most part throughout the whole game well red did have that scout rush i guess and disappointing thing to see here from red red i expected better of you 99 percent of the map scouted that is sad this there's one little 
like tile or two here, and then this as well. Red, unfortunately, could not scout the whole map. I was going to call you a beast, but now I'm just disappointed. Now, obviously, his auto scout was dead, right? At 99% of the map scouted is just... It's so close. <laughs> it's such a tease, you know, because everyone wants to get to that 100% uh, mark. I actually wonder if the game shows 99% with this. I, I don't know if Capture Age would show 99 point something percent. I guess the game's going to show the exact same thing, right? Because this is 86% on the dot. If anything, Capture Age would maybe show the percentages. Because I know there have been times where I'm at 99%. And it's just one single tile. And a couple of these here is more than that. Like, even that's like three tiles. But great game. Uh, hope people enjoyed. Let me know what you thought in the YouTube comments, of course. This one, honestly, guys, like, this is as close to the spirit of Low Elo Legends as we've gotten in a while with the Low Elo cast. Just, we, we stepped back the aggression, right? We had to go down to 500 Elo, but it was super cool to see some of the fun and interesting strategies in this game instead of the 800 or 900 elo which yes still maybe technically a low elo legend but it's maybe not quite as nostalgic as this was